All right, welcome everyone. I'm gonna do a Sunday video, get prepped for next week. Next week uh, is you know full trading week. We should have a lot of institutional money coming back from vacations, from the holidays. And I'm expecting to see more of, you know, more market consensus when it comes to actual moves. Uh, we should see better volume and in general should be a much better, uh, much better market to trade in terms of getting a good read and getting kind of follow through on moves. So let's get right into it. Leave me a thumbs up if you guys are new and we'll get right into it. So NASDAQ futures, you can see here on uh, Thursday night, they, uh, you know, they made it look like it was going to break, break down this trend line right here that I had marked out. But again, towards the close, they popped it up again. That's why the holiday trading is, you know, false breakdowns, false breakouts. It, they're everywhere. So now we should see more con, uh, consensus coming into it. Let's look at the triple Q's here. You can see here on the triple Q's, I've got this trend line right here. I've got kind of two trend lines marked out, but I've got this one going down here. They broke down, did a back test, and basically closed, you know, above support. So maybe a false breakdown. Next week, we're going to see more consistent moves where we're likely to see, you know, either uh, market consensus on buying or market consensus on selling. Uh, I think the selling is the preferred scenario. Uh, looking at the daily chart, <clears throat> it just tells me that with these big negative divergences that have been in play. Here on the daily, you can see the RSI is making a negative divergence. If you want to you know, know how to read these negative divergences, just follow along with the channel or take my trading course, my technical analysis course. Link is in the description below. Uh, it's a $99 course for about a five hour uh, you know, multi-topic training course. Um, so, but there it is, negative divergence on the triple Qs. It's, you know, it remains intact and it's not been violated. So all this price action up here has been divergent high price action. And it's been divergent high price action on very thin holiday volume. So when, you know, when you're creeping higher on a thin holiday volume, making divergent highs, the, the, the institutional traders are going to see that. And they're, you know, they're going to see the negative divergence. Doesn't mean that they're going to come out and just sell, but that's something I'm going to be looking for, looking for some sort of big sell signal breakdowns. All right, so these trend lines, you know, I've got this one and I've got this one. If I take this one away, it really makes a bearish rising wedge. Um, and you can see it's right there. Um, and I do like this trend line. So I'm going to, we're going to continue to watch to see what happens. But the main thing I'm going to be looking for is some sort of a big breakdown candle, a big sell signal. And it doesn't mean that we're going to get it next week. Maybe it comes the following week. I think it's coming soon, though. The negative divergences tell me that it's going. Now, these can, you know, these can continue to extend and you can continue to kind of grind around making slightly higher prices. But you can see the price action lately. It's it's just, you know, a lot of gap ups here in the futures and then no big candles. There's no big breakout kind of buying volume. It's really just, you know, small gains each day. On the SPY here, you can see the daily, we have this up upward price channel and it's a lot more clear on the hourly right there. And so ultimately that's an upward trend. The trend is still intact. Uh, there is no sell signals. And so uh, it should continue higher until it doesn't. Uh, that's what I see. However, I would not be wanting to be, you know, adding to long positions or establishing a new long position uh, thinking the market's going to go higher, you know, much higher right now because we have negative divergence right here on the daily, big negative divergence right there. So all this price action is divergent high price action, which has a higher probability of failing. Doesn't mean it has to, but this is a game of probabilities. And, you know, you typically want to put your money where you have the higher probability. Right now, I see a higher probability of a breakdown uh, also, you know, we've got this big major resistance line and the way, the way I view the market right now is I view it as here's your 2009 lows on a weekly channel. Uh, here's your upward price channel, kind of the bull market since 2009. We broke that bull market right there in 2018, late 2018. A lot of people don't realize that. 
Uh, and then the, all of this price action here, it, you can see the volatility that's taken place over the last few years. We didn't have any kind of volatility like this throughout the entire bull market. Uh, a couple of big sell-offs, but nothing like big, the big sell-offs and, and big rips higher and big sell-offs that we've seen here. So volatility like this is often in, indicative of a trend reversal. You know, you usually see volatility increase during trend reversals. And that's what I think this is. I think we're going from what was a bull market to, to the break, to kind of the topping pattern, to, the, uh, to, to a bear market. And so this is why I trade the market looking for more short opportunities because, you know, we broke trend, you, the Fed came up, cut interest rates here and rallied us here. We got to this resistance line, sold off again, Fed came out again, popped us back up and we're right there, right at resistance. Now, if we can recover that and hold, then perhaps, you know, perhaps there's something else going on, recover this trend line up here. I suspect we're not going to be able to, or if we do, it's not gonna be for very long. Um, obviously, there is the potential for just a complete FOMO, melt, you know, rip your face off uh, top, topping pattern. And, uh, you know, I, I'm aware of that. So I'm watching for that, but uh, equally, we're still below that major resistance that's proven to be resistance, and it was support for, for years. Here's your 2009 lows. And you can see we held support right through here, held support here. This is a weekly uh, weekly charts, held support there, held support all through here. We broke in late 2018. The weeks held as resistance, held as resistance there, came up here and right before the COVID drop. I put out a video saying, I think this is the market top uh, right in here. It was right in this area. I said, this looks like the market top. And that's what enabled me to you know pretty much be fully short for the entire, well, most of the COVID drop. Uh, I covered my short down here and actually got long down here because we started to put in bullish divergence. And then it, it rallied and I, and I sold out. I, I, I didn't catch all this rally to the fr from the long side. Um, and so, yeah, I, 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 I'll admit that, you know, I can't get everything right and you never know how long a move is going to go or what's going to happen. But, you know, that's what I was looking for. So I was able to catch this big down move where most people caught, were caught flat-footed here, and that's why it sold off so strongly because everybody was long up in here, and I suspect, I would suspect probably nine out of or nine out of ten traders, probably more, were or just fully long right in here, just like they always are at the tops, and then um, you know it sold off. So again, I don't always catch all the long moves, and I'm not looking for the long side as much as I am the short side because we're below this trend line. So that's a little justification of why my channel is focused more on short trades uh, because the technicals tell me that we are topping out, we're putting in volatility, and we are right up near resistance. That's about the best I can do. Most people um, that are trading uh, just really point to the Fed and say the Fed's never gonna let this market go down, but that's not a technical reason, you know. Looking at charts and reading what the charts are telling you is is how I trade the market, and I I don't just put blind faith into the Fed because uh, you know the Fed. You know, going back to the spy, you know, the Fed didn't stop this big thirty six percent crash. The Fed didn't stop this twenty percent crash. Yeah, they they turned it around and pumped it back up both times. But look at where we're at. Does that mean the Fed's going to just step in right here and pump us up a bunch, or are they going to let it? You know, or is it going to start to sell off and then the Fed will step in? So again, it's all about risk reward. Right now, I see more reward to the downside than there is to the upside. Down here, when we were down here, I saw more reward to the upside than the downside. That's why I covered my shorts flip long. And then about the middle waypoint, you have to start, you know, picking a side. And, and obviously, uh, I'm looking for more downward price action. Okay, small caps here. And uh, the small caps have been on a rip rally, but they broke trend. So here's your hourly chart. This is going back to November. Nice, clean upward channel broke right there and has not been recovered. You know, they try kind of a little bounce here and then we're just flat. So let's see how this plays out next week. Uh, we'll see if there's more downside. Looking at the daily on this one, I don't see any negative divergence on it. So, I mean, I'd prefer to see this thing pop up and back test this trend line right here uh, from below 
and put in some sort of a negative divergence when doing that. That's where I'd want to be getting short the, the small caps on a back test of the resistance line and putting a ne negative divergence. That's a more objective area than right here, although we could continue to, to just break down. We'll, we'll see what happens next week. And look, bonds, as, as bad as a... You know, as as bad as bonds are from the yield perspective, there's virtually no yield on bonds. Uh, that doesn't mean that bonds can't you can't make money in bonds because you only are worried about the yield if you're going to hold the bond to maturity. So this is TLT. We're looking at long term bonds. These are 20 plus year bonds. It's an ETF, but um, you know. Not everyone's holding these things for 20 years. Some these can just be a trade, and this is this is an ETF, so this is trades just like a stock. There's no maturity, but bonds you can see on the daily big bullish divergence. It's just been building, and it's a pretty big, sizable divergence right there. That's a good size bullish divergence. Looking at the PPO, zooming in bullish crossover, kind of in this area. It's been whippy the last few weeks, but we're still bullish, still trading pointed up. Momentum starting to kind of really point up. Uh, you, oh, going back to the histogram on the PPO, you can see it's increasing right there. So that tells me that bonds are likely to make a break to the upside. And if that happens, it's most likely coming with the stock market sell off. So keep an eye on, on the bonds. It's important to watch. Let's look at gold here. Gold continues to break higher. Um, and you can see last week, you know, continued to slightly move higher. So, you know, I, I'm not so sure. Gold doesn't had never had bullish divergence here on the bullion, uh, but we've got we've got bullish momentum. Looking at the PPO, we had a clean bullish crossover right there, uh, and then also we had this downward price channel right here that we had a we had a bull trap sold down to price support around 1780, 1790. I was talking about that for months as we were all through here. I said, oh, look, I think we're going to 1790. We did, and now we're starting to break uh, back above. You can see we, here's a breakout, came down and held that support, and now is continuing to move higher. So as of right now, this looks bullish. Um, you know, it, it the breakout is, is continuing to hold, and it, it does look bullish. The dollar, all right, so the dollar has had some bullish divergence for a while. You can see here on the RSI, <clears throat> there's your bullish divergence where you made a slightly higher low than the previous low, while the price right here was making a lower low. So <clears throat> so the, the momentum indicator was diverging or go, kind of moving in the opposite direction trending wise than the price. That's what divergence is, opposite direction. Now you look for the convergence, which is you know either momentum starts to fall with price or price starts to move higher with momentum. You start to look for the two to come together and con converge. <clears throat> uh, I see, and also if you look, kind of narrow it in on the hourly, let me pull that up. Looks like we've got bullish divergence on the hourly as well. Uh, you can see it right there, if I can get that little arrow out of the way. Right about there, uh, actually all through here, we've been building bullish divergence. <clears throat> So there it is, you've got momentum. See how it's trending up, starting to move higher and higher. And then if you look at price, the corresponding price, there's a lower divergent low price. There's there's another kind of divergent low. So this is divergent low price action all through here. Let me kind of circle that right there. Well, that's divergent lows. And that is telling you that there's likely to be a trend reversal. And then you can see the dollar moved higher. So. Let's see what the dollar does, but I think the dollar is likely to make a move to the upside. I keep pointing it out. Uh, everybody's short the dollar as well. From what I've been hearing, there's a lot of people that are kind of record shorts on long-term bonds, record shorts on the dollar. And, you know, I think there's likely to be a counter, counter trend move and poten you know, potentially a pretty vicious short squeeze. So we're going to watch that. How to trade it. I mean, you can trade it with bonds. The dollar moving higher is usually bullish for bonds because bonds are just long-term dated dollars. You know, it's the promise to pay future dollars. Um, and there's there's some dollar, uh, I think UUP is a dollar bullish fund. Uh, you have This one doesn't move a whole lot. So, you, you know, you have to take a larger size. You can see, 
this move from here down to there is about six, 15%, and that's going all the way back to March. Um, so you gotta take a larger position than that. But again, every everything in this video is just my opinion. Nothing's actually trading advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Let's look at financials, XLF, rolling out to the daily. So you've got, this is going back to really the bull market. <clears throat> Here's your lows of 2009, but sometimes when you're drawing a trend line, you want to throw out the the impulse moves of of a, of a move. So, you know, usually when you don't have a bunch of reactions and you just have kind of an impulse move, you can throw that out when drawing your trend line. So we really started to get into a trend right here in 2011 on XLF. And you can see held all through here, held through here. So the trend was really recognized uh, at that point. And then in the COVID drop, we broke trend, clearly broke trend. And it has not been really, it has been recovered, but barely. So you can see here, they pumped it up here. We hit resistance, sold off. And recently, you know, they pumped it back up with, you know, again, it's the Fed. I mean, the Fed is literally the the mask, you know, the man behind the curtain. They pumped it with uh, an announcement that <clears throat> they can do their share buybacks again. And, and they waited till, you know, till we were right here to try to get this to break above. They're, they're clearly, you know, use, you know, using technical analysis. And look what, all we've done is really just kind of gr been grinding around here. Now on, on Thursday, yeah, that's relatively impulsive. I mean, it's okay. But the thing is, look at the volume right there. No volume, just dead volume. And that's because it was a holiday uh, trading day. So that's not market consensus. What you want to see is you know more a bigger green candle and and volume come in boom big volumes maybe something like this with a big green candle that would be major market consensus and participation in the financials so until you see that i don't trust this uh this little holiday candle right here that makes it look like they're trying to recover that that could just be running stops again negative divergence here on the daily you can see it right there Looking at the PPO, bearish crossover, yeah, it's coiled up, so maybe we get a little kiss of that and then it rolls over, but still bearish on the on the PPO. In general, this looks bearish to me. I think we I think we sell off, I think we reject and sell off. Uh, let's look at some of these other financials. Okay, so this is the one I've got. I'm short Citibank. You know, really, I just tried to find the, the chart that looked the cleanest from a technical perspective when I was looking at the financials. I know JP Morgan is kind of best of breed. So I, I have a very small short position on JP Morgan, uh, and I can point where, where I took that at. But Citi looked a little bit better from a short perspective. So that's why I grabbed this one. Uh, Citibank, negative divergence right there on the daily. It's you know, all this grinding price action. And this is what you look for. You look for kind of this grinding price action where the momentum is just really dropping off. Yeah, it's still making new highs, but it's struggling, you know, it's just, you know, it's not impulsive. Look at the price action right through here. Very steep uh, ascent. When we get up here and we start to put in the negative divergence, it's just barely moving, you know. So the, <clears throat> the rate in which it's increasing is really dropping off, telling me that the, you know, the sellers are increasing in, in volume and strength and you're, they're about to overtake the buyers. And, that, and when they do, at that moment when they overtake the buyers, that's when you see the big impulsive move to the downside. PPO here on City, bearish crossover right there. So negative divergence right at resistance as well. You can see here on City, this was a pretty good resistance line. Uh, it proved to be resistance right back here in 2015. Uh, it was resistance right through here. Uh, it wasn't really resistance right through here. This is when this is that um, when the market broke trend in the S and P 500. Uh, this is when the Fed did their last rate hike. So you had the impulsive move down, and then they reversed course and changed, and it instantly snapped back with the V bottom right back up to this trend line, and then it held support all through here. Yeah, it whips through it a little bit, but close enough. Now. We had the COVID drop, broke down, held as resistance right there, and we're back, we're right back there. So again, I want to take a short at resistance. That's a low risk area. And I do expect they're probably going to pop it a little bit. So I'm looking for that. I, I think that they can cleanly pop it, maybe just a little bit, then it rolls over. Uh, I'm going to let that one you know, kind of do its thing. But again, look for volume, look for market consensus on what this thing wants to do.
the negative divergence tells me that it's likely to go down, uh, you know, with for the next trend. You know, maybe they pop it a day or two above here, run some stops, get the shorts out. But the next trend tells me it's going to be to the downside. Same deal with JP Morgan going back to 2000 and this is 2009 lows. Here's your trend. You can see uh, on the daily chart, lots of uh, reactions. Yeah, we chopped through it there a little bit, held it there. Then as you zoom in on, here's your COVID drop. And then there it basically, uh, it um, held as resistance and we're right back to it. So again, this is where I want to be taking shorts and especially when we have negative divergence right here, it's not confirmed negative divergence. The RSI needs to turn down to really confirm that. The PPO though, eh, you had a bearish crossover. It looks like they barely recovered it. But again, that was on Friday or Thursday or Friday, I guess, right before, whatever, New Year's Eve. Um, so again, no market consensus on this move. So I, let's, let's see what next week brings. Okay. Commodities, so corn. I did take a long position in this. It 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 just looked too good to not take. So hopefully, you know, it, it it's not. They I could see a big sell off candle coming. Again, th for me, this is kind of a longer position, a longer term position, not so much a uh, you know trend trade, but maybe maybe a longer term trade. The th these things are pretty cheap, I think, relative to the market. Here's a monthly chart. Look at that monthly chart. So you've got this big bear market right here in corn. And look at what we've got going on right here just recently. And that's a pretty strong month. You know, that's a breakout month in general. So that is a, that is a breakout. And to me, it looks like this thing's starting a new bull market. So I could see this getting all the way back up here to 50 when it's all said and done. Don't expect this to shoot straight up. Um, I'd expect, you know, probably a pullback in sometime soon and then we start to work our way higher but in general for a longer term investor this is kind of a more of an investment trade looks pretty good from a uh, to the long side you can see here on the on the daily we had bullish divergence right back here see it right there how you have higher momentum or trending up this made a lower or a higher low than previous, and price was making a lower low. So this is divergence, your bullish divergence really started to show up right, you know, that right in there is basically where it started to show up. And since then, boom, big move higher. So this is the kind of trade that I like to do. I like to buy, you know, I like to start to buy these things when you have, if I can delete that, I, I like to start to buy these things when you start to get bullish divergence. I like to buy them right in here. There's your buy signal right there. So this is the area that I'm being, I'm buying. Uh, the momentum traders, for the most part, they're kind of getting in through here. They're definitely getting in through here. This is the, this is looking parabolic. So I, you know, the thing is, is that, um, you know, and I didn't buy this one until it broke this trend line right here. Uh, so yeah, I guess I am jumping on the momentum trade. I am expecting it to pull back though. So keep that in mind. This is not, you know, if it wants to pull back, I could see a back test of this trend line, maybe undercut it just slightly. And, but hold in this area is really what I'm expecting. So keep an eye on that because I am expecting that. <clears throat> uh, but for a longer term trade, which is what I'm treating this as, because when you look at those monthly charts, it looks pretty good. For, for starting a bull market. So I'm looking to actually add to a long position. Uh, I'm gonna hold it and add to a long, long position on pullbacks to support. That's kind of how I'm treating this one. Okay, let's cover some of these stocks that I've been on, you know, talking about for weeks to months. Here's, uh, this is a FedEx. And again, I pointed this out back here. I was talking about saying this looked like a really good short. Uh, we were making a bearish rising wedge. We had big, clean, negative divergence right here. I was pointing out saying this is divergent high. Uh, and sure enough, if you shorted even before you broke trend, I wait for a break of the trend support. But if you, even if you shorted right in here, you pretty much caught the high so far. Uh, and this has gone really just straight down ever since. Now we're at support right here at 256 or sorry, 259. That's support. So I'd expect, you know, I think we probably get a little bounce up to about 268, 55, 
and then continue lower. Uh, but again, that is so far looking good. <clears throat> so that's how I see that one playing out. Um, GM, I'm short this one. As of right now, I'm looking just for a pullback to this trend line. Here it is. This is your trend line going back to the March lows. And we, uh, you know, we had a minor trend line right here. I'm looking for a breakdown of that. Why do I like that? Well, you know, you've got you, you PPO, you had a negative crossover. Um, this one, this one never really had negative divergence in the in the daily. So I'm sure it's in the hourly, and that's why I took the trade. Um, let's look back here. <clears throat> Yeah, it was showing up really right about here is your negative divergence. You can see it's, there's the negative divergence in the hourly. So when it broke this trend right here, uh, I think it's heading down to this major trend line. Now I do expect it to hold support down at that major trend line. Uh, and, and then so what we'll look for is probably, it'll probably hold, I'll be covering my short down there and then it's likely to make a new slightly higher high and then you'll get that negative divergence in the daily chart signaling that the bigger downward trend is coming is coming next but for all I'm looking for right now is a move down to about 37 38 somewhere right in there we'll probably get that next week Tesla clean and clear negative divergence here on the daily PPO right here bearish crossover you had the bearish crossover right there. It did a little back test, rejected and sold off. So again, momentum is to the downside uh, in terms of the momentum indicators. Price is obviously still diverging to the upside. I think that's about to end. Here's if you look at the the daily chart here, we've got this uptrend uh, trend line right here. We broke the trend, but Tesla, you know, obviously is is you know a fanatical stock that people there's a lot of people in this stock that will buy it at any price because they think this thing is going to be the next you know, I, I you know they're going to solve all the world's problems or something i'm not so sure but you know there's a lot of speculation around this stock uh and so you know there's a crowd of people that are buying it no matter what and any little dip they get that they, they buy uh they're, that's typically, they're typically the bag holders, you know, the, the people that have that, that kind of mentality that are just buying no matter what, typically end up being the bag holders. And that's what I think is going to happen here as well. You can see here, um, we broke the trend right here, back tested, sold off a little, the dip buyers were there, and then it's just ramping higher. So clear, strong, clearly strong momentum to the upside, but the indicators are telling me that momentum starting to, to fade out. If you look at the hourly here, we also have this secondary uptrend line right here where we held there, held through here, held. We then broke and back test one, back test two, but pretty clean in terms of back testing and being rejected. Um, I am, you know, so I'm looking for this to roll over. Maybe we pop up, make a new slightly higher high right here and then roll over. But I am looking for this to, uh, to start to head to the downside. Neo. This one has just been going sideways between this range for the most part. Here's your top end of the range, 4828. Here's the bottom end of the range, 3870. And it's just been oscillating, you know, between that range. Yeah, we closed above it slightly on last week, but again, that's there's no market consensus there. So I still think we head down to the more major trend line, which is would which would pretty much be a, the next move down. And we're likely to run into what looks like dual support. So maybe we move down, hit dual support. And that trend line comes back to July. You see lots of daily reactions along that trend line. So I'd be looking to cover my short uh, right at that dual support area. Zillow Group looks like a good short to me. Um, <clears throat> you've got an uptrend line going back to the March lows, basically. On the daily chart, we broke trend right here. Back test one, back test two, kind of a cluster. And yeah, this can continue to back test. That's the thing. You don't know how how often it can back test. But typically what I like to do is when I take a position, I'll add to it on these back tests as long as the technicals still look good. You know, if you have negative divergence and it still remains intact, 
then I like it still. Um, and we do have that. So here's your daily chart negative divergence right there on the RSI. Here's your PPO bearish crossover right there. Um, and we were kept getting rejected at resistance. You can see we're starting to sell off now. Uh, you know, more selling, lots of red candles right in here. So I, you know, usually the, this starts out slow and then people start to realize and it intensifies. And so that's what I see this thing doing. Um, where's this thing going? Well, you know, I've got these trend lines down here. Um, <clears throat> there's a, kind of a range right in here. I'm going to have to tighten it up, see where we actually could potentially be heading down. But again, a lot of these things are really overstretched. Um, this one from the March lows just you know, in a few months is up almost 700%. So that's crazy. Um, again, uh, I, I can see this thing selling off pretty drastically because this is a lot of hot kind of momentum money. And momentum money, one thing about momentum money is people buy stocks when things are going up and they'll tell you they're holding it for the long term and it's a long term investment. And that's really, it's really easy for them to say that kind of stuff when they continue day in and day out to make money. They, they, you know, emotionally feel like they made the right move. And they did actually, you know, if you're making money every day. Uh, but as soon as that turns, it starts testing their will. And a lot of the reason why they bought it is because it was going up. When it quits going up, they don't like it anymore. And everybody exits all at once. That's how you get the big drops. And that's what I see happening in, in some of these things. Uh, Qualcomm. All right, here's your bull market trend. I'm not in this one anymore. I covered my short. Uh, made a profit on it. Uh, but here's here's going back to the March lows. Here's your upward channel right there. And we're just holding the bottom end of that support. Next sell signal would come on an impulsive breakdown of this bottom price channel. So until you get that, uh, this is still bullish and in an upward price channel. Intel, yeah, they're going to play around with this one a little bit. It looks like, so we broke down. There's a pretty impulsive breakdown and they ran up and did a back test, but that's all it really is as of right now, back test of resistance. Um, and it's uh, still holding below. So we'll see if this, you know, if they can recover it, if they recover it again and they can hold, then, you know, I'm not gonna like it so much from the short side. I don't like a second recovery of a trend line, but if it can break and continue to, to sell off, it, it looks like it's actually starting what, what could be a bear market in this Intel stock. This is a weekly chart right here, and this is your 2009 lows. So here's your bull market in Intel over the last decade, We're walking up. And you can see as I zoom in, we broke that trend line, recovered it, broke, tried to recover it. Look for this thing to continue to the downside. If it does, and you start to see selling, that's gonna signal that Intel's likely entered a bear market, and you're gonna see a lot lower prices. Over time, these things take time to play out. This is not a one day trade. You're not gonna enter the position and be right, you know, all the time in the very first week. I try to get everyone as close to the risk as possible. I like to take all my positions as close to risk so I can minimize my risk if I'm wrong. But, um, you know, oftentimes my trading style, I'm not profitable instantly. If you wanna be profitable instantly, then you've gotta trade momentum and you gotta just jump on some ripping trend and usually you're right right away but if you hold it too long you end up being wrong in a big way my trading style is more about taking a good sized position uh and and then letting everyone realize that that's the trade to be in and let them come you know let everyone come to the trade that's typically how i like to do it so i'm trying to buy things cheap basically when everyone is not looking and then you know when everyone sees it they all jump in and, and I'm, you know, very profitable on that. Again, skate to where the puck's going to be, not to where the puck is. That's kind of the, the mentality here. Carvana. So uh, I'm still short this one. And you can see this thing was is putting in a bearish rising wedge. And what did they do? They popped it to the upside uh, on the holiday light volume trading week, making it look like it was just going to rip higher. Uh, but then again, you, big selling days. So they came in and smashed it down. That's three big selling days, uh, wiping out, you know, really wiping out all the gains going back, you know, all the way through all of December and, you know, part of November, basically. So 
This thing still looks good to the downside. Negative divergence, big negative divergence right there on the RSI. PPO, bearish crossover, pointed straight down. Uh, so where are we going? Well, probably going to head down to the support line. The buyers will be there. We'll, they'll step in and maybe we'll chop around a little bit. And then I'm, I'm still looking for this thing to break to the downside because this negative divergence isn't signaling just a move to the downside. It really it, it started, the divergence goes all the way back to here, back to August. So this big pattern, all this price action tells me that this thing's likely going down to 125, um, you know, possibly lower, but I could see at least, you know, I could see about 127, 125 uh, to satisfy this divergence. DraftKings, again, on down almost 5%. Um, so Carvana and DraftKings together, both down for almost 5%. Um, and you can see, you know, it's just nice breakdown. Uh, again, it's on Friday, you know, it was on holiday trading. So it's not a market consensus breakdown. You need to see, you need to see market consensus. You need to see more volume. You need to see institutional participation. But as of right now, breakdown, there it is. You got to, every breakdown and every breakout, you got, you, you have to at least take it for what it is because it's there in the chart. But it, you know, depending on the nature of the breakout and when it happens and, and all that and how it happens, then that can help you kind of evaluate the probability of that breakout holding. Um, so it's not a high probability breakdown right now, but it could next week. We'll see what happens. NVIDIA grinding sideways. So the momentum's pretty much dead in this thing. It's really been dead money. I'm short this thing, um, but it's it's really just been kind of dead money for, for a while. You can see here, it's just basically going nowhere, especially recently, all this price action. I mean, this just going nowhere sideways. Negative divergence, big negative divergence. Uh, and so we're looking for price to break down. I suspect this thing's gonna break pretty impulsively uh to the downside and and then you know i'm likely to cover on that big impulsive breakdown uh so yeah we're just sitting on this one waiting for it to go peloton short this one i got short peloton right here on this move on december 22nd that's where i shorted it why did i like that short well i've been talking about this thing for a while saying it had no negative divergence previously. So when it was breaking down right through here, there was no negative divergence on the daily. And I was looking for that negative divergence before taking a more meaningful short position. And then it showed up right here. They gapped it up. You can see there's your negative divergence. <clears throat> and I was anticipating that. I talked about the potential of a back test putting and creating that negative divergence. And that's what we got right now. PPO hasn't made the bearish crossover yet. But you can see it looks like it's heading that direction. So um, look for more selling in Peloton next week. And this thing has a ways to go down. Um, I think first target is probably going to be about the 79.80 level. Uh, and from where we're at now, that's a drop of about 46%. Um, so yeah, we'll look for that. And potentially a lot lower. You know, this thing has really has a lot of hot air. So could go lower. Something interesting on Nike, so this little, so he have a bearish rising wedge right here telling you that it's likely to break down. You've got negative divergence right there on Nike. So bearish moment, bearish technicals, but bullish price action, except you have a bearish pattern, bearish rising wedge. Here's your earnings. They came out with earnings and they popped it up, but look at what the market did with that earnings. So if you bought before earnings, it popped it up. You probably felt good. Everything seemed great. Nike's doing great. Earnings are great. That's how you feel. Uh, <clears throat> and so you probably didn't sell. And then uh, the market's been selling. You know, they, they sold that earnings. Not a lot. You know, it's not impulsive yet. But again, the, there's only been selling since the earnings, since after earnings. So something to look at. Um, you know, if you bought before earnings right there, you're about break even. So I suspect you know, we, we continue to move lower there. MP, this is a materials corp. I think they're like a rare earth, rare earth metals for EV. It's an EV stock bubble stock. All right. So all the EV stocks are basically in a speculative bubble. And I was watching this one. Here's your daily chart. This is going back to November. You can see from November, this thing just ripped to the upside going up about 250%. Trend is your friend until the end. There's the end of the trend right there. So you broke trend, 
Now, a lot of people don't realize that, so you have to understand that. They think it's just a dip buying opportunity, but trend broke right there. And you go to the hourly here, you can see, you know, yeah, I could adjust my trend line, maybe something down like, you know, could go like that, give it the benefit of the doubt. But the point is, still broke trend. Uh, you know, we're, we've still broken and we're just kind of back testing. If you look at the hourly, you got negative divergence throughout there. Looking at the daily, negative divergence right there. So telling you the trend was about to break and now you have a trend break. So to me, this looks like it's going down. Got some gaps along the way. I would just target those gaps. Here's your first one, somewhere right in there. Looks like they, you know, they stepped in a little early and bid it up. I suspect we're going to hit that gap. And then you got another gap right down there at about uh, 2330. That should hold us some more major support. <clears throat> so look for those. Um, that, those are moves of, you know, about 30% down. Okay, and we'll wrap up with Apple. Long video, but I haven't put out a lot of videos in a long time. And if you guys are following along for the trade ideas, then I think it's important to cover a lot of these different stocks just to give you guys my read on it. So here's the video. Uh, uh, here's Apple. Uh, looks like a double top to me. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but sure does look like it. So let's look at the bigger picture on Apple. It's important to know where Apple is going because Apple being, a, I believe they're still the largest company We'll see, you know, Tesla might become the largest company <laughs> sooner than later. But, um, you know, this is 2009 lows. And, you know, I don't like this trend line here. I just marked it out. It's not the cleanest. We're, we'll probably redraw this one. The trend line is really more like that. That's really more your bull market in Apple. Something like about that. <clears throat> I'll tighten that one up. The point is, zooming in, you can see, here's the week. That's a doji. That's a reversal candlestick. Look for confirmation, more selling basically to confirm that. Um, so that's what I see on the weekly chart. I see a double top as well where we held as resistance. Uh, looking at the RSI on the weekly, negative divergence right there on the weekly. And so in general, uh, that's pretty bearish. And then on the daily, you've got negative divergence on the daily right there. And we, we really didn't have negative, negative divergence on the daily in Apple until just right here. This price action right here, if I zoom in, you can see how that little wick, they popped it just slightly above, right there. Made a new marginal high, just barely a new high on less momentum, putting in negative divergence for the first time on the daily in a while. So this didn't have negative divergence heat all through here because we didn't make a new high. There's your new high negative divergence, and looks like a double top to me. So we've got the trend line support right there. Uh, it's about right there. If we look at the hourly here, there's your trend line. It's about right in here. Look for an impulsive breakdown or sell signal uh, of that trend line. So a break of that trend will set this thing in motion to the downside. And if, if Apple moves down, tech moves down, and if tech moves down, the market moves down. That's just about as simple as it gets. Uh, not you know, not completely, but Mark, Apple has huge market cap weighting. Uh, the market can't go up. It has a really hard time going, you know, substantially higher if, if Apple's selling off. And this daily divergence tells me that Apple's likely to do it soon. Now, yes, we could pop up, make a new high. You know, there's plenty of that. What I would do is just wait for the break of the trend line support. Uh, and that's what, that's, that's, that's the trade I'd be waiting for. All right, guys, long video. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for following along. If you want me to take, take a look at a stock or do a subscriber stock pick video, leave a comment below the, of the stock you want me to look at, and we'll, uh, we'll get to it when we get enough of them.